This business is like the Wild West. Gold, silver, rare coins, lost treasures of history. You never know what's gonna walk through that door. Oh, whoa! There's a Civil War sword. I got robbed at gunpoint. Watch this. I'm Evan Kale, and this is Pawn Man. Guys, we have a very exciting episode of Pawn Man in store. Before we get into it, number one, if you like these videos, be sure to like it, hit the subscribe button so you know when new Pawn Mans are coming out. And I wanna thank our episode sponsor, Sure Bullion. Sure Bullion is a bullion dealer in Boca Raton, Florida. So if you're in that area, be sure to check out their store in Boca Raton. They are appointment only. They're a brand new store. They just opened this year. They buy and sell. You can contact with inquiry sales at surebullion.com. You can also buy from them online, just like I have a Shopify store surebullion.com and or, or again follow them on instagram at surebullion again located in boca raton appointment only buy sell surebullion where trust meets gold and with that let's get into a great video oh joy so we have uh des described this exciting piece of history in front of us here you are and this is a christian organization as it was advertised to me what's the name of that christian organization a clansman i am a k i am Wow, that's in good shape. What year is this from? I think it's probably pre-30. Tell them to PCGS would grade this. I like to send really provocative coins in to get graded as like a latent <laughs> you. They might grade this though. Uh, it's a good look to sell, but I'm the guy that can wear that hat. So I think you needed that to get into the meetings. Oh yeah? It was an admissions token? Okay. That's a membership yeah. token, I'm sure. So if you had one of those and were carrying it around... You... Oh, maybe, maybe the fact that it's in good shape means the guy was a terrible Klansman or didn't go to many meetings. All right, well, let's see... Can you look it up? What we can do here, I sure can. I will try and try to look up the symbol of hate. Look it up and find a place that actually might sell it. You know, the... See, that's the other thing too. Uh, it's I can't put it on eBay. No, um, I tried. <laughs> did you? How long did that last? About 10 it minutes? It about a day. A day? So the real item of interest is this one right here. Well, you got something else that's more interesting than this clan token? <laughs> Oh, here we go. Here's this exact token. Okay, here's a lot of six and one for 325. 100 bucks? Sure. Yeah, probably overpaying, but it's pretty rare. It's got a Numisma score of 95 on the rarity index, so. All right, so 100 bucks for that. And then what was the other item? Jim Kelly's Nugget. Oh, sorry, what am I looking at here? Your well, what's Jim Kelly's Nugget? Well, I don't know. You have to research that. Oh, I mean, it just looks like a random restaurant. How much do you want the cough links? Like five bucks? Okay, so we're at 105. Let me get you cash, and sir, I'll be with you in just a moment. Let's take a look what you got. All right. All right, let me throw some gloves on. I'm gonna have to file some of these. So I'm gonna just file a little bit, and if it turns green, it's uh, plated. If it doesn't, then it is uh, something of silver. All right, so yeah, this stuff will just be like a buck. Okay. Uh, but this stuff here is better. 847, call it 850 for everything. Sounds right? Cool. Cash or check? Cash begins with a degree. Okay. Well, well, how are we going to do here? Um, I'm base, I'm getting about 18 and a half, 19 an ounce right now at the market. So I'll make about 200 bucks on the sterling deal or the 800 silver deal. And then yeah, this like, that, that guy's like kind of weird. I haven't seen him in a long time. He literally sold me his diplomas last year and I was like, do you want to keep these? You earned them. No, no, I'm, I'm downsizing. I don't need this crap. So you're like, master's degree. Okay. I don't know. He, he made it out like this. Like I was supposed to know what this is. And I think it's like his like dry sense of humor. He was just like pulling my leg, but I'm looking at this like Jim Kelly's nugget. Like what's, was it like a famous horror house? Like what's that? Nothing. Some random resort and he just was kind of messing with me. As far as the token goes, I'll probably get about 200 bucks on this. I'm gonna put this on my Shopify. I'm probably not gonna make a TikTok about it because I have a sneaking suspicion of where that's gonna end up if I post that. And I got the KKK token. Let's talk about the KKK for educational sake. If you don't know what the KKK is, it's called the Ku Klux Klan. It was formed by Confederate soldiers or former Confederate soldiers in 1865 after the Confederacy fell. You can divide the organization's history into three waves and the Klan's ethos and main goal is to reestablish white dominance over American society. The first wave, 1865 into the 1870s into Reconstruction. It was founded in Pulaski, Tennessee. It was kind of a club for former Confederate veterans, but it quickly became a terrorist organization 
organization aimed at reminding everybody that although the South had fallen in terms of its state, its people were still in insurgency. So for five, six, seven years in the late 1860s, early 1870s, they ran amok in the South as a radically violent terrorist organization, killing at will, causing mayhem. I mean, they were terrorists, literally it's terrorism. But then in the 1870s, the US government cracked down and fought back. These acts combined with federal troops and boots on the ground in the South looking for this, trying to stomp it out, this was the end of the first wave. And the first wave would lull until the early 1900s. In the 1910s, we have the second wave where the Ku Klux Klan saw a massive resurgence. This was probably their biggest they've ever been. This peaked in the 1920s with Ku Klux Klan demonstrations becoming commonplace. There were literally millions of members all throughout the country. And they were targeting now not just black people, but Jews, Catholics, any kind of immigrant. I mean, it was kind of anti-immigrant from the get-go, you know, mainly focused toward blacks. So this was huge through the 1920s. 20s, but again, it kind of deflated. Public perception changed in the 1920s and scandals, internal strife. They had a lot of uh, influence in Congress, in Washington. They had a lot of rich members, but just by the end of the 1920s, the organization floundered again. The third wave began in the 1960s with the civil rights movement. And this wave is still by historians considered to be going to this day, unfortunately. And this third wave, this again was a really violent wave, much like the first wave. Uh, you have a lot of domestic terrorism, bombings, lynchings, kids kidnappings, etc. The Watsons go to Birmingham. We read that in elementary school. It's actually a good book, but um, like great example. There's a, a church that gets bombed. So the KKK uses a few distinct symbols. They have the burning cross, and this is a symbol of clan power and intimidation. And side note, one of my favorite South Park jokes, I'm such a South Park fan. One of my favorite South Park jokes is when all the rich people move into South Park, it's an episode from, I think, 2001, season five. But they call, instead of using the N-word, they call them richer. We've got to show these richers that they aren't welcome here. They're like, all right, we need a light. We need to scare them. Why don't we light a T, a lowercase T in their yard? T, time to leave. Next time, let's use a capital T to show them we really mean business. <laughs> okay. Other symbols, the robes and the hoods. My favorite joke is when I see somebody who looks like they definitely are the type. I always mutter in a joke, what size bed sheets you think they wear to the cross burning? Again, this is to look like originally ghosts of fallen Confederate soldiers, but you know, they, they look like ghosts with their stupid silly little bed sheets. Third, they have a number of secret rituals. Uh, this coin, this token being part of that. This was a, you presented this to get into the meeting. So as far as memorabilia from the KKK goes, membership tokens like these, the KKK has a hierarchical design of its regional division. States are known as realms. So that pertains to that. They have ceremonial medals, they have pocket pieces, other items such as ritual swords, the bed sheets they put on. Honestly, one of those stupid crosses they burn, if, it, if, it, if there's timbers left or, you know, if there's like char charred remains of it, maybe that, I, at that point, it, it, you're basically entering into the realm of true crime or murderabilia, because I, I would think that's something affiliated with something really bad that happened. But yeah, these are collectible. It's just, these are really hard to sell. I, if you have one at home, I don't want to buy any more of these. It just happened to walk in. I was like, oh God. So there's the KKK for you uh, and a little quick blurb and some collectibles pertaining to the horrible terrorist organization that they are. Hopefully they go away. Doubt they will. Well, I've got a, this is a old style vintage racing helmet from the 50s. Okay. I am like mega scaling back and buying some of this stuff because I have okay. so much sure. of it downstairs I haven't gotten to. Okay. Uh, it's interesting. It's got a pretty good price. I, got, I think I got 20 bucks on it. If that were a bell, you'd be looking at between 250 and 350 bucks. Wow. Okay. It's not, so I mean, I priced it accordingly, Speed but it percent. definitely is genuinely old. Yeah, for 20 bucks, why not? Okay. Why not for 20. Then uh, I've got some VW stuff, some old vintage VW. These are from 1963. These are service booklets. They had apparently a service booklet one and two with coupons. Okay. The, These I'm going to pass on. I uh, okay. Paper documents, I, okay. I have a lot of trouble with. I mean, the stuff is cool, but... And then I've got a firehouse police station call box key. I found these on eBay. The keys alone, if I remember correctly, I've got it noted, are probably going for 45, 50, 60 bucks. This, I'm gonna guess turn of the century. You can look at the ink writing on the other mm -hmm. side. That that looks really, really, really old. What do you want on this one? I've got 20 bucks on it. That one I'll let you keep. These were medals from 
high schools in North and South Dakota, near as I can tell, if somebody participated in like a relay or swimming or whatever, mm -hmm. they would get that medallion, a commemorative medallion. And I'm guessing those are probably from the 20s. I have some high school medals that are sterling downstairs, and again, I've been mm -hmm. sitting on them for You're a while. You're not doing anything with them, are No. You? Okay, all right. This box alone is 35 to $45. Yeah, yeah, Th uh, this That's is right. okay. So, all right, cool. I'll yeah. take them all six each. All right. How many uh, are there? I've got 47, but go ahead and you can. And they're not all shotguns. There's a few of them that are shells. So, 302 is what we'll do. My head's already itchy. Aha! Uh -huh, I'm racing to a profit! Aha! Uh -huh. uh, that won't sell fast. I'll double my money, but sure. The ammo boxes, though, they're empty boxes, and yet. 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks maybe even on some of these. But no, I am trying to scale back on the stuff and okay, I'm busy. So I just got these in stock. These are more Wagner mercenary patches allegedly taken from the dead. I am honestly inclined to believe it because if you look pretty close, it does look like this blood right here and here. Well, you know what? They around and found out they shouldn't have done that. Ukraine was just a boy. So what are we looking at here? This one I've already sold. This is the rarest. This is the Isis Hunter patch. I guess evil broken clock is right twice a day in hunting Isis. That's something that they do among all the war crimes they commit. So this is from somebody who was hunting Isis and then obviously went over to Ukraine and like I said, around and found out and died. So this is Isis Hunter. I don't know what most of these are. This is obviously the Wagner W. This is Soldier of Fortune. And again, what do you think that kind of reddish color might be? And then this is like their, the original design of Wagner. And I don't know what this one is. Actually, in the worst way possible, I kind of like this one. It looks like he's eating like two turkey legs. He's just like, oh. These are on the website right now. You guys check out plumbmanstore.com. This one I sold on my whatnot auction. I got, I think 220 or 230 for it. It was pretty expensive though. And then these are available. I think I'm asking 190 a piece. So check them out. These are, again, also very rare. Like, where are you gonna find these? Guaranteed authentic. Putting everything away here. I got a lovely package from Mr. Blake Alma. You guys be sure to follow Coin Hub. I got these on his Whatnot auction. I had him sign it. So I guess he wrote his own book or his own like info guide about errors. So check this out too. I'm excited to read this. Coin Hub. So gang, we have the subscription service now and I'm making a commercial for it on TikTok. So go to pawnmanstore.com. We just added a numismatic coin subscription as well. Okay, so like an example right now, I bought this for the silver one, but maybe I'll use this for the, the numismatic one. I bought an 89S Proof 69 Ultra Cameo Silver Eagle. This is worth about 125 bucks. So for 100, you're getting a good deal. Check that out on pawnmanstore.com and let's continue watching me fail. Subscription service. It sounded fine to you? Okay. Sounds me like I had a stroke. And people have been asking me to start a subscription service for quite a while. Well, guess what, guys? I just did. See, how hard was that? Once again, you guys, I want to thank our episode sponsor. Be sure to check them out in the video description below. There's a link you can click on. Also, be sure to click on my link where you can go to all the great stuff about Pawn Man, get my books, check out my whatnot, etc. But with that, you guys, for this episode, we are talking all about error Currency, currency that's a mistake, currency that never should have existed, never should have been made, was not destroyed, got out and became a expensive collectible. So what is this stuff? Where does it come from? How is it made? Well, in short, just that it is an error. It is made on accident. We've discussed error coins. We've discussed counterfeit currency, but we've never discussed error currency. Now, paper currency in general is considered way less collectible than coins. Now, why is that? because paper is hard to keep in good shape. If anything happens to the paper and it's so easy, so brittle for something to happen to it, it hurts the value. It is a lot harder to have currency that is uncirculated than it is a coin. A coin is more durable. My rule of thumb with is something uncirculated, has it been used as a commerce device? Has it achieved what it was made to do? Has it been used for transactional purposes? Traded hands for a good and or service? And if the answer is yes, then it's circulated. It's been circulated as money. With coins, it can fall into this category, but you still not be able to detect, you know, it still might be in great shape. With currency, it is a heck of a lot easier to detect if this has been circulated, if this has been used as a commerce device to play to that threshold. Example, uh, when you send in this currency to get graded, they look at it under black light. So if it's ever been touched, they'll see fingerprints and that can knock it off. Make it about uncirculated instead of uncirculated. It's that strict with a coin, not so much so. On top of that, like I said, paper is more brittle, it's more easily damaged. And it's just the survivability of metal coins versus something like this, it's, you know, coins are gonna survive a lot easier. We could ship coins in here quite a lot. Someone's been sitting at the bottom of the ocean oftentimes for centuries and then they pull it up and then they're out it goes and it's fine. You can't put paper at the bottom of the ocean. It'll it'll get destroyed. Paper generally 
has a life expectancy tops of about 500 years, and then it just starts to naturally disintegrate. Now there's older paper out there than that, but with most cases of paper, because it is so brittle and so easily damaged, if you're gonna be hard pressed to find currency, it's 500 years old or older. Now where this doesn't play true though, is with currency errors in star notes. With errors, coins and currency are collectible. However, there happens to be more coin errors than there are currency errors generally in a year. And that's because, you know, take for example, in 2022, 16 billion coins were minted by the US Mint versus 10 billion paper notes were minted. On top of that, a penny, for example, is about a quarter of an inch versus the standard size of a US note is 2.61 by 6.14 inches. It's a larger item and therefore it is going to be easier to see a mistake than it will on a penny. Now, the mint and the treasury, they use computers now. They don't just use humans. It used to just be humans staring, looking at everything. Talk about a bad job. What do you do? I stare at the same conveyor belt all day looking for like one error. I catch like two a day. And if I don't catch those two a day of the millions and millions and millions that go by, then I get fired. It is a lot harder, uh, or it's a lot less likely to have an error happen and they catch them easier because they're larger. So therefore they're less common when they do get out. Now, how the f something like this gets out? Like what, they got Helen Keller working over at the mint? Another factor at play is when error coins are found, they're destroyed. A note has a serial number. You can't just destroy it. It doesn't make sense with the serial numbers. What they do is they issue the star note as a replacement. So if you ever see a note with a star on it, you know, star note, what that means is the original note with that serial number was either damaged or there was, it was a misprint that had something, something was wrong with it. And so it got destroyed and reissued with that same serial number, just with the star attached to it too. Now those become collectible as well. They can get expensive. They generally aren't, they're generally stupid gimmick items. Like people come in with modern star notes that are circulated and I don't buy those because they're worth like just a, hint, a pinch over face. But those can get expensive in certain conditions. We'll talk about it. Now with currency, much like coins, condition is everything. And because it is paper and it's so brittle, it is so much easier to affect the condition. These have silk fibers as an anti-counterfeiting measure. As this gets bended and impressed and this and that, these fibers will come out more. These fibers, if you see those, that's indication of wear. That's the equivalent of scratches on a coin. So a fold, a tear, even the presentation of the fibers coming out just will generally clue somebody who knows what they're looking at that the condition is as such and just it is harder to find an uncirculated note, like a truly uncirculated note. So like on this, this guy told me when he sold this to me, I paid 50 bucks for this. It's a shift error. We'll look at it more up close in a sec here. He told me that this was uncirculated and I looked at it and I thought, well, no, cause I can see the fibers in here. If I can see the fibers, it is not uncirculated. That simple. So keeping these notes in good condition and finding them in good condition, like uncirculated, it's really hard and it's hard to keep them that way. It is very easy to damage a currency note. There are approximately 20 known errors that can occur in currency. We won't cover all of them, but I'll give you a list of some of the different examples here. Generally, the severity of the error is what dictates the price. How rare is it? Well, what happened to it? The most valuable pure error is an 1882 double denomination 50 hundred, and that's worth about $75,000. The other error that's worth the most is a 2013B star note, and this was printed with pairs of identical serial numbers, which never should have happened. And the only reason it did happen was because of a miscommunication between two mints. Now, the problem with this is it is really hard to determine a price when you're buying these. In fact, I almost hate buying these. Let's go over some of what I have in front of me and I'll kind of explain why that is. Now we are doing this episode partly because I bought these. I don't see errors coming in too often. A part of why I don't buy them is they don't sell fast. Currency never does. I have some really expensive currency here in my store and it's just, it's just not selling fast. And it's, I got like over a thousand dollars and it's good stuff. It's super collectible stuff, but the pool of people who buy this stuff just happens to be smaller than coins. So as a result, I don't do backflips when I see this kind of currency walking in. Even the really cool, beautiful stuff, it doesn't sell fast. Errors, even less so. So part of what is so so hard of dealing with these. This right here, this is an ink smear error. So the ink smeared all over. Now I couldn't find anything like this. I paid $150 for this and it's up for, I think I got this for 500 on my website. Now there's nothing like it, nothing even close because errors, currency mistakes are so rare. There's not another 1988A with this mistake. This is like a one of one. Like I said, I could not find anything close, especially with the score. So 500, sure. And sometimes what's so frustrating about this is some of these notes get really, really expensive. And like I looked at this, this easily could have been a $10,000 note. 
This easily could have also been $300, who's to say? Here we have what are known as offset printing errors. And this occurs when ink comes into contact with the currency sheet before it enters the press. You get a mirror image of the design appearing on the opposite side of the banknote. So this 20 here, and again, couldn't find anything even close to this. I have this on my website for 600. This is a, I paid 50 bucks on this one. But here you have the back coming over on the front. And again, you have an even more extreme version of this here. And then this one is just a novelty item. And I had a feeling it was, because this is, I looked at this and I'm like, God, if this, if this actually got out by the treasury, this, this would be like a miscut. If this actually got out by the treasury, this would be really expensive. And I paid 50 bucks, but I paid 100, I should say, on the pair of these. And this was a home run. And then this is crap. Now these here, these two are not mistakes. These are just, these are currency that are collectible. These are what are known as radar notes. So this, the serial number 0040040. It's the serial number bouncing out and coming back. See, ones become sixes, become nine, become six, becomes one. These are not error notes, but these are collectible notes. This, however, is an error note. I think this is a misalign or a shift error. The banknote has not been aligned in the printing process. So parts of the design can be missing or the design can overlap. Other errors that can occur, mismatched serial numbers. Fold over errors where part of the paper folds over the note during the production and so it covers it up and you get these blank spots on the note where there's, nothing's been printed. Missing ink errors. Part of the note is just missing some of the ink. It somehow didn't get printed on. Gutter folds, which occurs when there's an extra fold and the, the ink does not print over that part of the paper so then it gets unfolded and it's just blank. Cutting errors where the sheet is miscut. And then finally doubled, and these aren't all of them, this is just most of them. Double denomination errors. This is one of the rarest kinds of errors. This is where a sheet is is fed into a machine set up to do one kind of denomination, but then a different kind of denomination is printed on the other side. So like I said, that 50, 100, that was the most expensive one. Now again, the value of these is so subject. It is so hard to pick a price. I honestly hate buying these. They don't sell fast. They are very interesting and very cool. Uh, this is just wild. This one here is my favorite, this ink smear. But the pool of people who collect these is small and they can get ungodly expensive. And it's just, it's something that generally tends to sit. It's not viewed in the same light by collectors as coins are. And I don't think it ever will be, which is too bad because they are cool. But it is definitely a niche of people that collects this kind of thing. The fact that I paid $50 and this is probably worth about 150 defeats the purpose of why this exists. So that's why the treasury and the mint employ people to look for this to stop it because it shouldn't be out there. The fact that it is, is you're collectible, but it's just, it's one of those things, like I said, it is so damn hard to price. People generally want so much money for them. And when you look these up, they often are priced very high and it gives the illusion that they all must be that high. And sometimes I can't figure out the price on these things. Like, you know, this should be, couldn't, I couldn't pick a price. And one thing you need to be wary of, watch out for fakes, because luckily I only spent 50 bucks. I had a feeling this was fake and this was worth taking a chance too. Cause like, if this was real, this would be really expensive, but People make fantasy items like these. They're not errors. They're manipulated items made to look like errors. Somebody probably had a sheet, a $2 sheet, and they cut this themselves and they passed it along. So know your errors, know what you're looking for. Generally, I would say if you're gonna be getting an, a high-end error, get one that's been graded, get one that's been graded by PMG. They're the best for currency. Their turnaround time, it's not like coins, it's really fast. They can get this back to you in three weeks. Low one, it's like 50 bucks to get a note graded, but I'm using the service. And also be sure you check out the serial number and make sure that it's not a fake holder because that is a problem too. All right, guys, well, just like that, it is the end of the day and the end of the episode. Once again, I want to thank our episode sponsor, SureBullion. Visit SureBullion.com, find them on Instagram, other social media websites, or if you're in the Boca Raton area, stop by their store, they buy and sell SureBullion, where trust meets gold. And if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to support me, you like what I do, please consider becoming a Patreon, spread these videos, share them on social media, get my books on Amazon, follow me at social media, at Evan Kale, at Pawnman, and I'll see you guys back here for another great episode. Later, guys.